Hello and welcome back to Endeavour. My name's Nick and in this video I'll be talking to you about some of the costs involved around buying a narrowboat. Not so much about the cost of the boat itself because they can range anything from a few thousand for a old dual upper to around about 120 to 130 thousand pounds for a custom built boat. But rather, costs like having your boat blacked, the pre-purchase survey, insurance and license etc. We will start with making the offer or the pre-purchase procedure including timings of roughly how long it took for me to buy Endeavour. Then we'll touch on the survey or pre-purchase survey of which there are three that I'm aware of. We'll then touch on the different types of license whether it is a canal and river trust operated or environment agency. I'll then go into the BSS or boat safety scheme briefly. I'll then move into the insurance and uh, briefly touch on what I paid for mine for a 70 foot boat. I then go into uh, marina fees and whether I pay for moorings on the marina or whether I to pay for them on uh, bank side. I then go into blacking and what the price for that would be for my boat per foot. And finally I will conclude with the overall over and above cost of purchasing Endeavour to include prices such as the survey cost, the license cost, the insurance cost, the marina fees, blacking. And briefly. Stay tuned to find out more. Making the offer. If at first you don't succeed, then try, try and try again. It took me five offers on the purchase price for Endeavour over a three week period before the seller and I finally agreed a price subject to the pre-purchase survey. The deposit. From making the offer and completing negotiations to agree a purchase price, next you'll need to pay a deposit. This is usually 10% of the agreed purchase price and in most cases refundable if you decide not to go through with the sale. This could be for a number of reasons, for example changes in your circumstances, financial or otherwise. Alternatively, your pre-purchase survey may pick up something that you hadn't accounted on. The pre-purchase survey. The pre-purchase survey is a recommendation before buying a boat, but it does not guarantee that the boat will be free from defects, but what it does do is to help reduce any potentially unexpected hidden costs. There are three types that I'm aware of. The first, the in-water pre-purchase survey. They will do gas and electrical tests, engine and propulsion tests. This I had quotes for three to four hundred pounds, and from Northern Star Marine, theirs are from four hundred. The second, hull survey. This incorporates ultrasonic hull testing of the steel thickness of the hull. This needs to be done out of the water and again I had quotes for three to four hundred pounds and from Northern Star Marine, Prom 295. The third, a full pre-purchase survey which includes all of the above. This from Northern Star Marine was from 495 for Endeavour at 70 foot came to 565 plus a cost of £120 from the marina for the use of their hoist. The purchase procedure. This is a quick indication of how buying your boat might go and in my case on Endeavour did. First, we make the offer. This is just to make contact with the seller and start the negotiations. Second, we need to agree a price subject to a pre-purchase survey. In my case on Endeavour, this took three weeks from making the offer to agreeing a price. Third, we then need to make a deposit of 10% of the agreed price. Fourth, we then have to arrange a survey and the use of a hoist. This is down to us, the buyers, and not the sellers. And obviously we need to arrange the hoist from the arena for the surveyor to lift the boat out for the ultrasonic tests. This process took two weeks to arrange the surveyor to visit the boat from paying the 10% deposit. Fifth, we then need to renegotiate the price based on the survey report. Obviously, if there was nothing wrong in the report specifically, then you can just pay the balance. In my case, I had a number of things wrong with the boat, so obviously we then had to renegotiate. This took about another week and a half. Finally, six, we need to pay the balance. So, in conclusion, the whole process from initially making the offer to paying the balance took approximately eight weeks. However, 
from agreeing the initial price with the seller to paying the balance actually took five weeks. The purchase procedure for Endeavour. The asking price was £44,750. As this was a little over my budget, I renegotiated with the seller over a three week period the price down to £41,000 subject to the pre purchase survey. I then paid the deposit of 10% of the agreed price, which meant I paid £4,100. Next came the survey. For this, I used Michael Clark, who works for and on behalf of Northern Star Marine Limited, and charged me for a full pre purchase survey £565. Plus, I had to pay a £120 fee to the marina for the use of their hoist. Following on from the survey report, there are a number of defects that have been found to include things like a fractured stern tube, a small crack in the hull, etc. Due to this, we renegotiated the price down to £40,300 and had an extra three bottle of gas thrown in. This process took about a week and a half to go through. And finally, I paid the balance of £36,200 to the seller giving me a net discount of £4,450 off the asking price, plus a free £70 to £80 bottle of gas thrown in. The boat licence. There are four types of licence that I'm aware of. The first, Canal and River Trust operated rivers only. The second, Canal and River Trust operated canals and rivers. The third, Environment Agency for tidal estuaries to include rivers like the Thames. Fourth, Gold, which covers all of the above. These are generally based on the length of boat and now the width of boat as of 2020. There are discounts for prompt payment, unpowered craft and electric etc. One exception to this is the Environment Agency, as they are charged on a one square metre rather than length. So Endeavour at 70 foot by 6 foot 10 would equate to 21.34 by 2.08 metres, which equals 44.39 metres. The Environment Agency would charge Endeavour out as a 45 square metre boat. As a side note, the Canal and River Trust waterways are licensed for 12 months from date of purchase, whereas the Environment Agency and Gold licences are run from January through December. So if you take it out in January, obviously you've got 12 months for the same price as taking it out in July, which will give you six months. Boat Licence Endeavour. Endeavour is a 70 foot narrowboat. So here are the prices for the licence of 2020 when using the prompt payment system. The first, Canal and River Trust are rivers only. They would charge me £679.71 for a 70 foot narrowboat. Canal and River Trust, Rivers and Canals. They will charge me for 12 months £1,132.85. Third, Environment Agency running January 1st to December 31st would charge me £985.05. Gold, also under Environment Agencies running from the January 1st to December 31st, covering all the above, would be £1,000. £511. Temporary Environment Agency Licence. Now I can purchase a temporary Environment Agency Licence for Endeavour. Remembering that Endeavour is a 70 foot by 6 foot 10 boat which equates to a 45 square metre boat on Environment Agency waterways. A one day certificate on an EA waterways would cost me £53 for Endeavour. A seven day certificate on EA waterways would cost me £94.90 for Endeavour. A 31 day certificate on EA waterways would cost me £247.30 for Endeavour. As an example of one of the discounts I could have had on Environment Agency waterways, if Endeavour had had a purely electric propulsion system rather than diesel, there would have been a 25% discount available off their licences. The BSS or Boat Safety Scheme is the equivalent of an MOT for your boat. They are required every four years. It usually takes about two to three hours to complete. If failed, you have three months to correct faults and retest, otherwise you'll have to have a complete retest done again. On average, you'd expect to pay around £150 for the test. 
What is RCR? RCR stands for River Canal Rescue and is the inland waterways version of an RAC breakdown service for boats. There are currently four levels of cover. The first, retainer, £65 a year and will cost you £50 a call out. The second, bronze, is £175 a year and for that you get four free call outs a year and parts to cover up to £1,000 in one incident or £2,000 per calendar year. The third, silver, is £210 a year. You get seven call outs a year and two relays, being that if the boat is more than 10 miles from its home marina when it breaks down and can't be repaired, they will ferry your crew back to your home marina. Fourth, gold, that's £280 per year. For that, I get unlimited call outs per year, two relays for my crew back to the home marina if I break down, a home start, and an annual 21 point inspection of engine and electrical systems worth £80. The final benefit of the gold license is that my boat is covered even if I'm not on it, and I'm also covered on my boat or when visiting other people's boats. As a side note, I chose the gold license. This is because I'm new to the boat and don't know its reliability and it gives me peace of mind for my first years cruising out on the waterways. Boat insurance. As a minimum, third party liability of £2 million is required before you can buy your boat licence. It is also recommended to have salvage covered in case of sinking or fire. Remembering to include things like sump oil leaking into the waterways or alternatively diesel escaping from the diesel tank. Does your cover cover things like tidal and non-tidal rivers and canals? Does it cover things like acts of God, lightning strikes or trees falling on it? You will also need a list of contents and cost price values for the insurance, for example laptops, phones, cameras, furniture etc. Remembering they want the new price, the price you paid for it, not what you think it's worth now. RIA Certificated Discounts. There are currently a number of RIA courses that you can do to help reduce your current insurance. For example, the Helmsman's course. This is a two-day course and usually costs around about the £360. However, it will require you to provide your own accommodation, although sometimes you can get subsidised accommodation through the trainer. This course will cover subjects such as boat safety, pre-start checks like engine oil and water, boat control, rope work and knots, safe use of locks, starting and stopping, navigation of bridges and tunnels, etc. The second course you can do is called the Sedney. It's now available as an online training course and should cost you around £30. And it stands for Code Européen des Voies de Navigation Intérieure. Alternatively, in English, European Code for Inland Waterways. Navigation. Although this is a European qualification and not technically valid in the UK, you're more than likely to find that these boat insurance companies are also insuring boats across Europe, and this will be the reason why they're giving discounts on insurance in the UK for having this qualification. The pass mark for this course is 74%, which equates to 11 out of 15 questions. It consists of part 1, 15 questions covering signs and voyage. Part 2, 15 questions covering lights, shapes and sounds. Thirdly, you can complete the Marine VHF radio licence. This can be completed in one of two ways. The first is to spend 10 hours in a classroom followed by a one hour assessment. Alternatively, you can complete the theory online at home and then attend an RYA certified training centre to complete the one hour assessment. These seem to cost around the 60 to 90 pounds dependent whether or not they're online or classroom based. This course will cover subjects such as SRC, which stands for Short Range Certificate, uh, DSC, which stands for Digital Selective Calling, GMDSS, that stands for Global Maritime Distress Safety System, EPERB, that stands for Emergency Position Indication Radio Beacons, and SART, that stands for Search and Rescue. As a side note, although 
The Marine BHO radio license isn't a requirement for navigation of the Canal and River Trust Canals and Rivers. It is a requirement for navigation of environment agencies' tidal estuaries such as the Tidal Thames. The boat insurance. Endeavour has a fully comprehensive insurance from Towergate worth £463.10. Some of the items covered are as follows. The boat's been valued at £45,000 worth of insurance. It's got a contents value of £2,000. It came with River Canal Rescue retainer level worth £65. It cost £50 to call out and unfortunately couldn't upgrade it to gold so had to buy that separately. It has a third party liability of £3 million. Remembering that the minimum requirement is a two million. Death is fifteen thousand. Loss of limbs is fifteen thousand. Total loss of sight is fifteen thousand, and legal expenses is a hundred thousand. As far as loss of limbs goes, it's not as uncommon as you might think might happen. If I was to fall over the side of the boat and try to get back onto it when it's moving in gear, you could have your limbs lopped off by the prop. So don't so much a boat when it's going. Other items covered by the insurance include hitting underwater obstructions like say shopping trolleys. This is apparently not that uncommon. And protected no claims, which uh, unfortunately I don't have as yet as this is my first year's cruising. Mooring fees for a 70 foot boat. There are at least four different types of moorings that I'm aware of. The first, a continuous cruiser, generally free, has to move every 14 days in one direction. For example, they can travel from A to B, B to C and C to D. But what they can't do is travel from A to B to B to A to A to B in the same location as this is against the rules. The second option is a canal side mooring. These are generally referred to as waterside moorings and are currently Canal and River Trust operated and they currently have 3,600 moorings available for your boat. Uh, they are currently also at 95% capacity. They are available in increments of 3 month, 6 month, 9 month and 12 month contracts. With one mooring in the Midlands for £2,000 and another mooring in the south towards London for £6,000. The third type of mooring that I came across was marina moorings. These have the added advantages of being gated communities with CCTV over your boats and car parks, pontoons with hookups and water points close by. Uh, quite often they have laundrettes, some with TV rooms, they do social gatherings for things like barbecues etc. There are workshops close by with welders and fabricators on site, painters, etc. Are just some of the benefits of living on a marina. Now, obviously, prices vary depending on where you are in the country, from the north and the south. I currently pay up in Leicester area £2,830.80 for a leisure mooring, although they charge an additional £600 for a residential mooring. The fourth type are private moorings. Quite often they're found at bottom of gardens. However, you'd have to check with the deeds of the house to find out whether or not you're entitled to park your boat there. And in most cases, they're free. Although you'll still need to buy your boat license. Blacking. Blacking is to paint the hull with a bitumen paint every two to three years to protect the hull from rusting. Although in some cases like hire boat fleets, especially those that have their own yard facilities and equipment, this can end up being done every six months to a year. There are a number of reasons for having this done. The first is it helps reduce rust by reducing the contact area of steel with water and air. Particularly susceptible areas of this might be the water line for example. Secondly, it helps to make the boat look nice. Thirdly, in my opinion anyway, is it helps reduce electrolysis from stray currents by reducing the contact area of steel with water and for this reason I have both bottom and sides of my boat blacked. Next, the blacking price. 
At my Maria anyway, the blacking price is £10 per foot for the sides, £15 per foot bottom and sides. As Endeavour is 70 foot long, I ended up paying £1,050 for both bottom and sides of my boat to be blacked. As an alternative to using the bitumen paint to do your hull, which is every two to three years, you can apply a two-part epoxy blacking, which will last seven to ten years. The only downside to this is that you're going to need to clean the hull back to bare steel, which does require grit blasting the hull to take off all the old paint and the rust. Now for interest, I've had some quotes for grit blasting the hull back to bare steel, and they range from £11 per foot to £25.20 per foot for grit blasting, which means to do endeavour would cost somewhere between £770 to £1,764 just to grit blast, and that's before we even start to paint. And then for painting, I've had a quote for £90 per foot to uh, grit blast the hull, prime it, undercoat it, and then two coats of top coat in two pack epoxy. So to summarise, the initial purchase price for Endeavour. The purchase price for Endeavour came to £40,300 after negotiations. The pre-purchase price came to £565. The boat lift and hoist came to £120 for the pre-purchase survey. The Canal and River Trust Rivers and Canals license for 12 months is £1,132.85. A fully comprehensive insurance from Towergate came to £463.10. Marina fees for 12 months was £2,830.80. As a leisure mooring, although a liverboard mooring is additional £600. Hull blacking was £1,050 giving a grand total of £46,461.75 for year one of owning Endeavour. So the over and above cost for Endeavour for year one is £6,161.75. For year two, this would obviously drop as I won't need the uh, blacking pre-purchase save your boat list, so that goes down to an additional £4,426.75. That's the minimum requirement to run the boat in its current location. Although if I were to take it on as a continuous cruiser, I'd save the additional 2,830, which means I'd have an initial running cost of £1,595.95 a year. Thank you for watching this little video about the costs of buying a narrowboat. If you like what you saw then please give us a thumbs up or hit subscribe. If you'd like to leave feedback then please comment down below. Otherwise we'll see you next time for another stimulating little narrowboat related video. This time will be about the costs of the pre-purchase survey repairs. Thank you and until next time, goodbye for now.